Welcome to Brainstorming America, and I'm here with John Merrill, and we're going to talk about a few things today. By the way, welcome to, to Oxford, Alabama. Thank you, Ken. Always good to be with you. You drove a long way. We usually do. Do you drive fast? Almost all the time. <laughs> 67 counties in one day. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Uh, I noticed when we were talking about Wagner Engineering, where you work, uh, you didn't hesitate to hit that 67 county. No doubt about it. <laughs> Hashtag all 67. <laughs> That's, that was one of the things I first uh, noticed about yours. Uh, your Facebook posting was star 67. Now, what's that mean? What's that mean? And then he hit me. We got 67 counties. Does that mean he's possibly going to go to all 67? Because I know we're on the State Board of Veterans Affairs. We have uh, veteran service officers in all 67 counties. Well, 63 or 64. And some of them share the county. But I, I thought, boy, if we could ever... I remember our commissioner would always talk about, I wish I could get around to all of them one day. During my term as a commissioner, I'd like to get to all of them. And here you are going just about it every week, seems like going to the all 67. 11th year in a row, my friend. Wow. Mm -hmm. 12th time. You ain't wearing out your welcome out there, are you? I'm trying not to. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were... As we left, I don't even remember what subject we were talking about, but it doesn't matter. It's all what's uh, happening in America. Um, was talking. To, did we talk about the fentanyl? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, on record? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Well, I, Some of it was worth recording. <laughs> we probably did. All right. So <laughs> the one thing that I've, uh, you and I are uh, probably keeping up to too much is the uh, situation between uh, the Attorney General or whatever uh, and Bragg with uh, former Governor Trump, uh, former President Trump. And it was uh, my understanding was the other, was it District Attorney? The other District Attorney turned that case down years ago. The same thing that Bragg is bringing up, where somebody's paid somebody something, which is under the covers behind closed doors, for what I'm concerned. But they put it out there in the media, and it can affect all of us um, because you're taking, you're they're talking about the weaponizing, they're weaponizing the law enforcement. That's right. Against the, the, uh, the political uh, parties and Donald Trump from the day he went in office he has been under that uh, hammer from the, from day one and I'm watching that play out now what are your thoughts on that? Well look he's not just an embarrassment to New York but Bragg is an embarrassment to the law enforcement profession and to the legal profession because this selective prosecution that you're referring to is what aggravates people to the point where they know that they're not able to get justice. And in this instance, there are some liberals who say justice delayed is justice denied. Well, actually what we're seeing is it play out the way that it's supposed to play out. If Donald Trump had been guilty of anything related to breaking the law that they're talking about, do you mean to tell me that all of these people that have been pushing back on him for the last six years would have waited all this time to introduce something that would have resulted in a conviction of him? Not hardly. Because those people don't care for him, they're not interested in him, they're not interested in his well-being, and they're not interested in what he can contribute to that community, that state, or our nation as a whole. So we need to move on past that. This guy's had his 15 minutes in the sun. It's time for him to find something else to do. Well, two things there. One is uh, he's one of the guys I was talking about who is soft on crime, period. Soft on crime over there for the bad things, the carjackings and all those kind of things. But we'll come after some little, somebody dropped a toy in the street. This is, and, and then most people know that you and, 
uh, President Trump are friends, but this is not about personalities. This is about law, law and order. This is about the weaponization. When people, I want you folks out there, when you get a chance to watch these uh, these uh, inquiries on television, where you can go to a C-SPAN or wherever you can to watch them thoroughly, and you'll see when it turns over from the Republican side to the Democratic member, what's the questioning? Look at, I was watching it the other day and I was looking at the uh, Twitter where the person was uh, sitting there and he was being questioned and the IRS was at his door, at his home. And while he's being questioned, he's got the IRS, the big boys, at his door. So if you don't think that's wrong. But Ken, look, I, I don't want to leave that part because I've had the privilege to testify before Congress on three separate occasions in my life during my service as Alabama Secretary of State. One of the things that became very clear to me very quickly was that the Democratic line of questioning had less to do with fact finding and had more to do with personal prosecution and persecution because that's what they wanted to see. As a matter of fact, Marsha Fudge, who was the chairman of the last committee that I had the privilege to testify before before, who is now a cabinet officer for President Biden, actually cut my microphone off because she didn't like what I was saying. But unlike her, we're not going to cut our microphones off, and we're going to join you. you again after this break. Thanks for tuning in and watching another episode of Brainstorming America. And welcome to Brainstorming America. And uh, we went away for a little bit. We, got to, we had to come back. We've got some more stuff to talk to you about. And, uh, John, I got some lists here I want to go over to make sure we get them covered. And one is uh, the, the word, and I, to help me out here because you, you're smarter than I am, equity versus equality. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about it because that's a big word now, yes, equity. Sir. And it seems to me like you got two apples and I got two apples. I got four apples. You feel like you need to get my fours. Two, two more for me, is that what it is? Well, look, this is part of the problem with equity and equality. Equality is what we all want. We want each and every person to be treated the same way because as citizens of the United States or citizens of our state or citizens of our community, we believe that each and every person deserves equal opportunity and we want that quality of life to be demonstrated because of where we live and what we do. We want equality. What some people want is equity, and that means to them that if you work extraordinarily hard, you have an outstanding income for yourself and for your family, you have a nice home, you have nice vehicles, uh, you can go on nice trips, they think that because they can breathe the air and fog a mirror that they deserve exactly the same thing that you have, regardless of whether or not they've chosen to work for it, regardless of whether or not they have the academic or the intellectual ability to perform at that level, they think that each and every person wants to have the same thing that you have and that they deserve that just because, as I said before, they can fog a mirror. Now let's think just a minute about this. What if we decided to run our professional athletes that way? What if we decided that, well, look, this is the National Football League. So there are 53 roster spots on each and every team. So we're going to make sure that there's 25 whites and there's 25 blacks. We're going to make sure that there's three Hispanics. And that's the way it was going to be for each and every team. How competitive do you think those teams would be? What we want out of our professional athletes is we want the best athlete to be on our favorite team so they can perform at a high level. They need to be compensated at the level that they're required based on their performance on the field. And that's the way that it's supposed to be in our communities as well. And anything else that's offered as a substitute is a poor one and not acceptable. I like it. I agree. The, uh, I like I picked up on that word, fog the mirror. Yes, sir. We use smoking mirrors. Yes, sir. In the military. So that's the same. One and the same. Can I use 
fog in the mirror, fog the mirror. Yes, because what we're saying when we say that just because they can fog a mirror, it just simply means that just because they can breathe, they think that they deserve everything else. You know, one of the things, Ken, I think it's important to remember, when I was growing up, uh, everybody didn't get to go to Disney World. Everybody didn't get to go to Six Flags. Everybody didn't get to go see Alabama play football. Everybody didn't get to go to college at Jacksonville State University. Only the people who were qualified to do those things based on the resources they had available to them were able to do that. We applauded people that worked extraordinarily hard to put themselves in a position to do that if they came from less than desirable circumstances. But just because you were a citizen of the world did not mean that you were able to do all of those things that everybody else was able to do. And people didn't complain about it because they understood where we were. Today, people think, well, I'm a citizen of the world, so I ought to be able to go to Disney World and spend a whole week there if I choose to. Well, you need to get off your duff and go make some money, and then you can go to Disney World. See, they didn't have uh, six flags when I was a kid. No, they didn't. But There's only you, one. But you did one welcome flag. those people to Plymouth Rock when they came. <laughs> I did. That was exciting. Helped help play some, some lots of rocks. Me and Eli Anderson. No doubt. <laughs> Eli was handing me the rock, but um, I, I want to use that. <laughs> I'm going to use that one on you. Now, here's something that um, I was watching yesterday, uh, an economist talking about our situation with the treasurer and all this. Uh, and it was talking about the COVID. You got these big checks. Everybody got a check. Got another check. Got another check. Stayed home, quit the job, or got laid off the job, never went back. And then when they when they were out, they took up these side jobs, and now and they draw the check for so long that they don't even get back in the workforce anymore. And now we could be heading for the same thing if we don't get we we got our we got our military already down to. 38% of it's gone. We we've losing our military. We're losing our workforce. We got that's that's our that's America. We got no we got no uh, defense, <laughs> and we got nobody that that uh, that's going to make equip make things for us, make the widgets, make the uh, little things it takes to drive these uh, electric cars. But I mean, I see that and it worries me because uh, I, we haven't got over the pandemic as far as the workforce. I know some people that have not went back to work to this day. Of course not, because if you're paying people to stay at home and they're making the same amount or a little bit more than they were making when they're working, what's the incentive to get out and work? People were not trained to do that. People do not have a natural desire to work. That's why it's called work. You need to be trained to be a contributing member of society when you're a child, growing up with responsibilities, growing up with an acceptable practice of behavior so that you know that you've got something you can offer to the community. If you don't offer that, then you're not a contributing member to society, and nor should you expect to be. What we want is we want each and every person to do all they can do to improve our environment so we can all enjoy the same quality of life that we would love to have for ourselves and for our family. Speaking of that, we'll look forward to seeing you back in just a few minutes after this last break on this segment of Brainstorming America. And welcome back to Brainstorming America. Here with a uh, friend, John Merrill, and we're talking about issues of the day and the night and the day before. Uh, what we want to do is to make sure that we spend enough time on these subjects that are talked about on the national news and the papers and whatever that, that they brush over, that we go in depth, that how they affect the people in our viewing area, whether it's Alabama, Georgia, wherever you might be. Uh, we want we want to break it open, let you see what it, our from our perspective, and we're going to break it down in the in terms that you can understand, and uh, I hope we hope that's our that's our goal. So I'm going to talk about something that I know some of you grandmamas out there and granddaddies have been hearing and probably may not have a good 
understanding for what they're talking about. You heard the word tick-tock enough that you talk, think they're talking about your clock. But if you don't know what tick-tock is, it's something that your kid or anyone else can access on a telephone and a keypad or the, the laptop. And they can look at these various things that some are corrupt the mind, and uh, but some of it are just for entertainment purposes. But it's by China. Or Donald Trump would say China. It's from China. And just that alone, being pumped into your kid's head, you know it's not to make them smart. You know it's not to make them more educated on the world stage. You know that it's not something good if it's from China. Now, hear me out on that because TikTok, I watch it enough that I probably corrupted my mind, but I watch it enough to know how, see how they're talking about it can be uh, uh, non beneficial to your ch children. But the other part of it is, is through that application on your phone or whatever, uh, China can access information about your banking accounts and other things. So they, it's a spy device, been proven. It is a spy device. When they asked the head of TikTok the other day, can you access someone's account right now without them knowing it? He danced around a little bit. Finally, they made him say it. Yes, he can. So think about that. Somebody can, from your daughter or your son's phone system, can get your information from your house, from your mortgage, from your driver's license, whatever. They can get a lot of information. What are your thoughts on TikTok? Down there, you've been paying attention to that. Yes, I've been paying attention to it, but I'm not on it. And I think TikTok is a bad, bad thing to have been able to be as successful as it's been in our nation so far. Uh, it's a social media platform designed for entertainment, of course, but there's a lot of people that have seen TikTok and use TikTok for entertainment purposes that don't really understand what it's all about or why you should be weary whenever someone introduces certain information to you on TikTok. Another thing that you need to ask yourself about social media platforms is why is it so often that when you are scrolling through Twitter or when you're scrolling through Facebook or uh, other social media platforms that advertisements that you receive on your phone are based on things that you viewed, whether it's automobiles, whether it's certain kinds of products, uh, whether it's makeup products, whether it's um, certain types of clothes. Uh, all of those things are questions that you should ask yourself. That didn't just happen in a random uh, act or uh, through coincidence. It happened because of the way the programs have been designed to gather data to make you more inclined to purchase certain products that are being provided by the advertisers who actually participate in those social media platforms. And if you think anything other than that, then you're actually fooling yourself. Absolutely. I agree. That uh, didn't matter if I agree or not. You've done, you, you didn't That's just a fact. <laughs> I agree. That's a fact. <laughs> I agree. Here's something that I will bring down to you, uh, bringing it home, so to speak. I hear these words quite a bit. I think I know a pretty good handle of what they are. But the one words are the, the words I hear most recently, ballot harvesting. I'm not, I've talked to several people, and when I say that, I get a what? A lot of people don't know what it is. So that's our job to tell Ms. Jones out there, when she hears those words again, she knows exactly what they mean. 
And you know, those are not bad words, but the intent of the person that is committing the crime of ballot harvesting is a bad thing. And the reason for that is because ballot harvesting means that I'm taking more than just my ballot and turning it in at my polling place where I live. It means that I'm also able to gather other ballots from other individuals. I may be able to vote their ballot. I may be able to do something with their ballot that they didn't intend for me to do. And then at that point, they would not be able to control their vote for the candidate of their choice. Whenever how, that how, happens, how that's that, a problem. How would that happen, that you would get somebody else that... Access. Sure. It can especially happen in the absentee process, Ken, or in the vote by mail process, which we don't have in the state of Alabama, but we do have absentee voting, where people can actually gain access to someone else's ballot, complete it, and then turn it in as if it were coming from that particular individual. That's one of the reasons why vote by mail is not something that needs to be advocated for or advanced in any other state in the union that it doesn't already exist. And in those states where it does exist, it needs to be reevaluated, reevaluated and reassessed to see if it's still necessary because of what's happening in those states with ballot security. If you had photo ID, that's out the window. Exactly. So you don't know who put that yeah, I, I think I told you before, I, I voted absentee one time, not too long ago. And when I did, man, the checks that Chowloon County put on me, including a phone call. Mr. Rollins, did you, you receive that we sent you? Yes, I did, and I put it back in the mail. Well, when did you send that? Well, we'll be looking for it, thank you. I mean, it was like that was a precious, and I felt good about that because it was my first time to ever do it. And I said, man, I, once it's out of my hand, my vote's important to me. I want to make sure that it goes where I sent it. That's right, that and it's your that. sacred right, and I'm glad you felt good about it, and we hope that you feel good about being with us each and every week on Brainstorm in America. Amen. We'll look forward to seeing you next week on the next edition.